Well, good evening and praise the Lord. My Pleasant Hill family and all of those who decide to join in with us tonight, amen, for Bible study. We give God praise, honor, and glory for you because you make all these things possible. So, God, we bless your name tonight. God, we bless your name. So, right where you are, when you just begin to clap your hands and give God some praise, right where you are in your home, go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Tell God how good he is and how much you love him. God, we thank you. And God, God, we bless you. You are a great God, and you are our God. And for that, God, we lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then even on tonight, even on tonight, I want to give praise, amen, to one of my daughters of the house in the person of Prophetess McCreary, amen. I want to thank God for her last week teaching Bible study for us. She taught on the subject, the hidden power of the blood. The hidden power of the blood did a magnificent job, so I want to thank her for that. And then even on this Sunday, amen, even on this Sunday, she came back and she taught us on the topic, um, taking it at the extreme or taking it to the extreme. Praise you the Lord. And I know that word bless you. I know that word bless you because it blessed me. It was great having an opportunity to sit back and just enjoy some excellent teaching and some excellent preaching. So will you give Prophet McCreary a great big hand clap of praise for the work that God is doing through her and with her. Amen. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And then God, even we thank you for her because she's out on the street corners, Lord God, holding up signs and blessing folks and riding on um, floats, God, telling people about Jesus and telling them about how they need to be saved with her Jesus Saves All ministry. So we want to bless her for the work that she is doing, in, not just in this community, but through around the world. So God, we bless you for her and the ministry of the works that she is putting forward. So hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. On tonight, amen, on tonight, we're going to shift gears just a little bit, and we're going to begin to some teaching on the word that's called hope, H-O-P-E hope and then i want to make sure amen that we understand what hope is and sometimes i want to make sure even though we feel like we are hopeless or we don't have hope at times i want to make sure you understand what it is and that even though sometimes we don't feel like it hope is really not a feeling Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to ask that you just grab your Bibles in your hand or grab your electronic devices. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to jump right into the word of the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for tonight, Lord God. We thank you for this time we have to share in your word. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just take me down into your storehouse. Give me perfect recall of your scriptures. Give me teaching instructions to be able to teach your people your word. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you now and prepare the hearts and the minds of your people. God, touch their ears. Allow them not only to be hearers of your word, but allow them to be doers of your holy and rich word. God, these are all things we ask in your daughter and son. Jesus' name It is in his name we do pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Grab your word in your hand, amen, and go with me to Romans, the 8th chapter. Romans, the 8th chapter. Reading verses 24 and 25. When you get there, signify by saying amen or give me a thumbs up and then we're going to be ready to roll. We're in Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 24 and 25. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Praise ye the Lord. And then our topic, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be hope. Amen? It's going to be just the word hope. My brothers and my sisters, when I look up the word hope in a biblical dictionary, amen, or in the Bible, um, you'll find it says something like this. Trustful expectations, particularly in reference to the fulfillment of of God's promises. Trustful expectations, particularly in reference to the fulfillment of God's promises. It's the anticipation of a favorable outcome under God's guidance. More specifically, hope is the confidence that what God has done for us in the past guarantees our participation and what God will do in the future. I might need to say that again. It's, it's the confidence that what God has done for us in the past guarantees 
our participation in what God will do in the future. As I said earlier, um, the world looks at hope as a feeling. And hope is not a feeling. Uh, the world says it, it, it's, it, it's the feeling that I want something to happen. But the Bible teaches us and the word of God teaches us that it's not a feeling, but it's an ex expectation knowing what God will do and what God shall do. God alone is the object or the ultimate ground of our hope. My hope is in God. My trust is in God. My faith is in God. So when I hope in the Lord, I know I'm going in the right direction. A lot of times people hope in things of the world. They put their hope in finances. They put their hope in material possessions. They put their hope in family and in friends. They put their hope in their jobs. They put their hope even in doctors and in medicine. But I want to tell you this morning, uh, you can't, uh, this evening, that you can't put your hope in anything else but the Lord. Um, some even say, I, I, I put my hope in the system. I'm going to trust in the system that the system will work for me. But if you're trusting in the system, then you're trusting in the wrong thing. Your trust and your hope has to be in the Lord. I put my trust in him. I put my hope in him. Because I know he has all the answers and all sufficiency to give me what I need. Glory to God. This evening, I want to make sure we understand a few things. And one is the assurance of hope. Yes, God. Uh, as Christians and as believers, uh, we have to have two basic reasons for the hope we have. Uh, one is because of what God has done in Christ Jesus. That, that, that's my assurance of this hope. I know he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I, I know about the death, the burial, and the so I So the first part is in my assurance is the hope I have in Christ. Yes, God. What God has done in him. Woo, glory to God. He allowed Christ to defeat death. He allowed Christ to defeat sin. Yes, God. And he did it for my He has overcome, has had the power over sin and death. Glory to God. I'm, all, I'm getting excited, y'all. He has the power over death and sin, and he did that for me. So that's one of my assurances in hope because of what Christ did in Jesus. I mean, what God did in Jesus. Yes, God. The, the second point I want to make here is, and, and I've done uh, maybe five or six weeks of teaching on it, is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The other assurance I have of hope is because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that's in me. Praise the Lord. Because the Spirit bears witness of His Spirit. Yes, God. The Spirit knows His Spirit. We connect on the Spirit. So a lot of times when we're dealing with things of the flesh, we know it's not of God because God is a Spirit. And they that worship Him, come on somebody, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise you the Lord. I, I, I'm going somewhere this evening because I want us to understand that believers can also meet trials triumphantly. Yes, God. Can meet trials triumphantly because they know in whom they trust. They put their hope in God and so when I face a trial, I know that I'm going to be triumphant. When I, when, I, when I have to go through a situation, I know I'm going to be victorious because I know who he is. Yes, God. Um, there's a scripture in Romans 5 and 3. And I'll run that real quickly because I, I, I want you to get it like it says it in the word. In Romans 5, 3 through 5, it reads thusly. This is in Romans 5, 3 to 5. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulations, watch this, worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience is the same word as character. And guess what? And character or experience, hope. Glory to God. And hope maketh us not ashamed. In other words, hope do not disappoint us. After I've gone through all of these things, hope is still the bottom line. Yes, hope is the finish line. Yes, God. I thank you, God, because I have hope in you. Mm. Hope is something that we do not see, yet we expect it. Ah, yes. When, when, when Yolanda Armadale said, it's going to rain tomorrow, and we need rain because our crops are dying, our flowers need water, our grass need water, we hope for rain. 
We don't see rain, but our expectation is it's coming. Uh, you don't remember the story about Elijah when, when he expected rain and, and Pete couldn't see rain for a while, but he said, um, look like I see a little cloud about the size of a fish. A fish. Glory to God. And later on, the rain came. When you expect God's promises, it helps you to know that you can have it. Our expectation is God will do what he said. God is not like man that he should lie. So whatever God said, whatever God promised, you can count on it. You can take it to the bank. You can cash that check because God is true to his word. Glory to God. When I say something like, I hope for a better tomorrow for my children and for my, for my grandchildren. I hope for a better job. I hope for better opportunities. I hope for increased finances. I, I, I hope for a lot of better things in this world. My hope is in God, even though I'm expecting it to materialize in other things. Yes, God. God is the one who brings those things to us. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things shall he add unto you. Praise the Lord. I, I know my Bible scholars are out there, so you know those scriptures. Praise the Lord. I, I, my hope is in God. And, and then when I think about the church itself, even as we go through this pandemic and as we go through these transitions and as God is shifting and moving and doing things in this year 2020, in this year of perfect vision, watch this, watch this. Our hope is in God that he would send the right people. Glory to God. That, that he would send the right connections. My hope is in him that he would send the right skill sets. Praise you the Lord. Watch this, watch this. And that he would send people with the right mindset. My hope is in him. And when I put my hope in him, he makes all of those things come together. Uh, don't try to figure out. Don't try to add it up because regular mathematics don't work. One and one might equal two, but when you put it in God's hand, glory to God. He said, one will put, whoo, a thousand and two, uh, come on somebody, ten thousand. So when, when you put math in God's hand, it don't work like math in high school. Yes, God. God will give you the right connections and the right relationship because you put your hope, you put your trust in him. Mm. God gives the believer hope. Glory to God. This, this hope we have is not just for anybody. This hope we have is a believer's hope. You have to believe in God, and God gives the believer, the Christian, he gives them hope in him. Uh, yes, God. Um, you have to go back to the foundation to really understand that, that, that God is telling you uh, when things go wrong in your life and things don't seem to really add up, take God back to the foundation. And then you can tell God, I'm a believer. Yes, God. I believe in you. And so the things that you told me and the things that you promised me, I call you in remembrance of your word. And God, because you said it, I'm supposed to have it. And God, I trust in you enough. I believe in you enough because your word says so. So God, you got to do what your word says. I call you in remembrance of your word, God, because I'm a believer. So now, God, you owe me. I believe in your word. I trust in your word, and your word has made promises, and so God, you are bound by your word to keep your promise, but if you don't know that, and you're going to hope in that, then poor are you, who don't know what God owes you, and don't know what God has promised you, and I hear you saying, well, God don't owe you nothing, well, in, in a sense, that's true, but if he's made a promise to you, his word says he will keep his promises, glory to God, so if you owe me $10, and you promise to pay me tomorrow. I expect my $10 tomorrow. Now with man, that might be different. But with God, whew, I'm going ahead and try to spend that because I know it's coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, let me help you. Jeremiah 17 and 7 says something like this. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord, or whose hope the Lord is. My question to you is, is the Lord your hope? Ah, yes, God. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm not trying to make any statements. Is the Lord your hope? And if you can say, yes, the Lord is my hope, then great because blessed are you because you trust 
in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is good for me. I'm, I'm, I'm praising God because I can see God moving in our lives and the things that he's doing and causing us to trust him even more. Because we put our hope in him and not our hope in the world. Even though it looked like the world is doing a whole lot of things for you, the world can't do nothing for you because everything of the world, it faded. Everything of the world will cease. Everything of the world will come to an end. But the hope we have in Christ, guess what? It's eternal. Yes, God. So why build up so many things here on this temporal earth rather than laying up things in heaven? The Bible said the stuff down here, moth does destroy it. But when you lay up things that's going to be in heaven, whoo, my glory, we know that those things are eternal. Hallelujah. And then uh, Paul helps us out to understand that even as he talks about his apostolic authority, his hope is in Christ Jesus. He identifies him by name to help us to understand, um, I'm called to God to be an apostle through the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, okay, I feel you, I feel you. Go to 1 Timothy 1 and 1. First Timothy 1 and 1 reads thusly. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. And the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. God is the believer's hope. Our hope is founded, glory to God, in God. Yes, God. Paul says, my apostolic authority exists in this hope. My apostolic authority is founded in this hope. God is the believer's hope. Praise you, the Lord. So no matter how dark your days may seem, Come on, somebody. No matter how hopeless your situation looks, no matter how cloudy your skies may be, watch this, watch this. Christ is still our hope. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Glory to God. God knows where I am and he knows all about me, so he is the hope of glory. Ah, yes, God. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords and he is the hope of glory. Glory to God. I know somebody saying, I don't. Pastor, I hear you, but I can't seem to get out of this predicament. I can't seem to crawl my way or crawl my way out from under all of this debt and all of these um, uh, bad situations that, I'm, that I seem to find myself in, all these terrible circumstances. And you know what I will say to you? You are absolutely right. You can. Glory to God. But with the help of God, and with hope in God, you can. You, you can't do nothing by yourself, but with the help of God and hope in God, then you can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen you. So don't, don't let that situation get you down. Don't let those circumstances bother you too much. I know it can be tough. I see suicide on the rise. Um, domestic violence on the rise. All of those situations can be tough, but you who are in Christ Jesus, you got to hang in there. You got hope. Woo. Yes, God. You, you got hope. Stop putting your hope in material things. Stop putting your hope in other things. Put your hope in God. Yes, God. And what, what happens when all hope is gone? Well, I'm, I'm going to hit you real hard because in Romans 4, 18, it, it, it'll, it'll tell us. It says something like this. Who against hope believed in hope? Okay, you didn't, you didn't get that. Let me, let, me, let me give it to you scripturally. Romans 4, 18. Paul, who was um, doing this writing, says, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Against hope means contrary to ordinary human expectation. So who against hope? Abraham against all hope, against what a normal man, an ordinary man, 
a common man would believe against all the things that they would believe in. He says, I still hope in it. And then my hope, this hope, the hope in, is in what Jesus Christ did. The expectation that God will fulfill his promises. So when I say against hope, it's contrary to ordinary human expectation. Against hope, believed in hope. In hope is the expectation that God will fulfill every promise that he has made. Oh my God. I want to tell you this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. God is doing a wonderful work in us. And I thank God that he's given us hope that we can trust and believe in him that those things he has promised us, we're going to be, may not be today, but God, we just got to hold on. We wait with patience for the things that he has promised. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to wait for you and to wait to see the manifestation of the things that we expect and the things that we are hoping for. Yes, God. I want to shift a little bit in because I hear somebody in my spirit saying, well, 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 uh, well that, and that's faith. But, well, let me help you. Faith and hope are two different spectrums. Even though um, they sound alike and they work together, they are two different things. The Bible says, and, and I'll go there real quickly, Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1 says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Somebody didn't get that. Just reading it, it, it opens my eyes. Because faith can't be hope when hope is a part of the definition of faith. It says faith is, come on somebody, the substance. of that, that, That's what you expect. But guess what? The expectation is the hope. Faith is the evidence. Hope is the expectation. So when I put out hope for something, I got to be hoping for the expectation. That, that, that's what I'm looking for. But faith is the substance. It's the evidence of the things that I hoped for. So if I ain't hoping for nothing, I can't have faith. Faith says that I'm hoping to get something and my faith believes it even though I can't see it, that I'm going to get it. Glory to God. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel you now. Watch this. Watch this. I'm hoping for a better tomorrow. Uh, that, that, that's my hope says I'm expecting, come on somebody, a better tomorrow. My faith says that's the evidence. Even though I don't see tomorrow, my faith says that tomorrow will be better. Because my hope says I'm expecting it. Glory to God. But watch how it comes together. Even though I don't see it, because I'm still in today. And I'm hoping, I'm expecting a better tomorrow. And my faith says, because I believe and trust that tomorrow will be better. Watch this, watch this. The evidence comes when I get to tomorrow. And guess what? It's better. <laughs> Glory to God. When, when I get to tomorrow, and tomorrow is better, my hope and my faith has done what God said it would do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God promises hope. Mm. Faith respects the promise. And faith is the evidence of what's been promised. God promises us hope. Faith respects that hope. And that hope is the promise. So faith is the evidence of what God promised us which is the hope or the expectation of what we want. God, ooh, that, that's good for me. I, I don't know if that hits you, but, but that's good for me because God is a good God and God gives us because we are his children exactly what we need. I think of God how 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, which we call the love chapter, and probably verse 13 and uh, that 13th chapter says something like this. But now abides faith, hope, and love. Praise you the Lord. And then it says um, um, with these three we know that charity or love is the greatest. But when you have those three graces faith, hope, and love you, you don't even need to ask for nothing else. I, I thank God because we're teaching on hope and hope is a part of the three graces. 
And if you got hope, you got one third of what you need. Hallelujah. But all you got to do now is get the faith. And that's two thirds. And then you add in the love. And I know love is difficult. Because sometimes we just don't want to love. And, and this is not a teaching about love. But you got to pull all three of those ingredients together. And you got exactly what it takes to live how God wants you to live. And to line up exactly what God wants you to be. God loves us so much he gave his only begotten son. That we may have a right to be with him. He's promised us help. And I want that promise. I want to receive it. I, I'm not ready to go get it yet. But, but in the end, that's the promise that we want. Glory to God. I'll close uh, this session with this last scripture. In 1 Thessalonians, the fourth verse, I mean the fourth chapter, around about the 13th verse, says this. People get discouraged when something bad happens, especially with the loss of a loved one um, in tragedy. And what I try to encourage folks is, it's our opportunity now to make sure folk know Jesus. Because if they know Jesus and they died in him, then that gives us hope. I'm going somewhere. We've lost in this world over 200,000 folk to coronavirus. We don't know what percentage of those folks knew Christ. So it's our responsibility to share the good news of the gospel, to share the gospel of Jesus with as many people as we can. Because it would have been great if we knew 100% of the folks who died were in Christ Jesus. Unfortunately, we don't know. But what we do know is the people that we come in contact with today, we have an opportunity to share with them Jesus so that when they breathe their last breath, we'll know that they have hope and we have hope. Watch what the Bible says in uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, or them which pass away, or them which die, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Don't be dumb or ignorant or, 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 or unknown regarding what Christ has done for us. Those who die in Christ, he says, watch this, you got a reason to hope. Mm. He, he helps us out because as you read a little bit farther in verse 13, it says this, especially in verse 16, for the Lord himself descended from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Glory to God. So, so that's the hope we have that those who died in Christ they're going to get up first. So why are you mourning and why are you weeping and why are you acting like there's going to be no sunshine? Because the Bible teaches us if somebody died in him we should have hope because we'll see them again. They're going to get up in Christ and they're going to get up first. That's hope. But then it goes a little further because it reminds us. Watch this, watch this. It says then Verse 17, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. Uh, that's more hope. Oh, glory. Yeah, I know that's not grammatically correct, but, but the first part is he said the dead in Christ go rise first. That's hope. And then he says we who are alive and remain going to be caught up. Baby, it's going to be a good day when we are caught up with Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because that's more hope. Yes, God. And then, and then watch the scripture because it goes just a little farther. And then it says, we shall be caught up in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever or forever be with the Lord. <laughs> now, I, I know that's messing you up because that's even more hope. Glory to God. Now, those who died in Christ will rise first. That's hope. And then we who remain going to get caught up with him. That's, that's more hope. And then we shall forever be with the Lord. That's even more hope. Glory to God. I thank God that we have that kind of hope. That our life be, is going to be with him. He went away to prepare a place for us. Glory to God. That when we go home, it's already ready. My hope is in him. I'm closing. And the last thing I will, will tell you is that hope is not 
hopefully. Even though the word hope is in hopefully, hope and hopefully are different terminologies. We just understood what hope is, the assurance, the expectation that this is going to happen. Hopefully means that there is a percentage or a possibility that this might happen. Hopefully when we get to the store, they'll have some hand sanitizer. That's a possibility. There's probably a, a less than a 15% chance that hand sanitizer may be on the shelf. That's not an assurance of anything. But when my hope is in God, it's 100% assured that there is no uh, chance that this going, it will happen because my hope is in him. We were doing a marriage conference and folks were talking about how some uh, people have this hope chest because they want to get married. And they begin to set aside linens and they begin to set aside jewelry and they begin to set aside uh, china and all these things in a hope chest. So when they get married, it won't be so expensive and um, cumbersome for them because they put away all these keepsakes for their marriage. The only problem with that is it's a hope chest on the possibility that you're going to get married. What happens if you don't get married? Now you got a chest with no hope, just full of stuff. You got linens and nobody to sleep with. You got china and nobody to eat with. You got jewelry and nobody to wear it for. So don't put your hope in a chest. Put your hope in Christ Jesus. Put your hope in God. You can guarantee it will come to pass because your hope is in him. Praise you, Lord. Will you give God some praise all over this building? Will you give God some praise in your kitchen, in your living room, in your dining room, wherever you may be, out on your patio? Will you give God some praise? God, we bless your name for tonight, for this Bible study, for this teaching on hope, because our hope is in you. Praise you, the Lord. Then I just want to share real quickly, amen. If there's somebody out there under my listening voice, and you don't know the Lord in the forgiveness of your sins, you have an opportunity to be saved. You have an opportunity to give your life to Christ. That way, when you breathe your last breath, you know that heaven shall be your home. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible declares, thou shalt be saved. We want to make sure that there's anybody out there listening and you don't know him. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get to know him, to receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is confess. Hallelujah. And then we as believers will help you to walk the rest. The Holy Ghost that he will give you will encourage you and pull you and pull on you. Hallelujah. That you can stay in this walk with the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Then just one announcement on tonight, amen, just want to ask as we continue to do, we pray that by now you have downloaded the PHNBC app. You can go to your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store, download our app, amen, so you can make sure you keep up with all our Sunday sermons, our Tuesday night Bible study lessons, uh, we're posting our Sunday school lessons, as well as other information, amen, to keep you engaged with what we are doing here at Pleasant Hill. Um, that's a wonderful means of communication for us. So please, ma'am, please, sir, um, invite a friend or a family member to get the app, amen, and follow along with where we are and what we're doing so you can stay engaged and you can be connected with what we're doing. Praise you, the Lord. And then lastly, while you're on the app, there's a give button. And we ask, please, ma'am, please, sir, to be consistent in your giving. Bless the Lord with your tithes and your offering. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and run it over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, the Bible says, with all it shall be measured unto you again. So we want to encourage you. Amen. We want to encourage you to be a faithful giver. Amen. And giving of your tithes and giving of your offering. That way that there will be meat in my house, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then for those of you who are not a member of Pleasant Hill, we ask, amen, we just ask, amen, if you'll continue to sow seeds into this ministry because we know that you are sowing seeds into good ground. And we know that when you sow seeds in good ground, those seeds will come up to you again, amen. God will bless you richly for the things that you have done, not just for us, but for the kingdom. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at the 10 o'clock hour. Amen. Where God will bring forth his word. Amen. We want to encourage you. Stay faithful to God. Amen. Keep this hope. Amen. Keep this hope. The hope of glory. God bless you on tonight. Amen. God keep you as my prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the word of hope. Because it gives us hope, God. Knowing that we have you on our side. So God, continue to bless us in a special way. God, continue to hold us in the hollow of your hand. Continue to make a way out of no way. And to do for us what nobody else can. Because you are our hope. So Father God, we ask that you would just dismiss us from this Bible study hour, this session, Lord God. And cause us to reunite again, God. For you will forever be our God. So Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you. It is in your daughter's son, Jesus' name that we do pray. And the people all around the globe said, Amen. God bless you and we'll see you on Sunday.